Hello world. Hello world. Oh, buenos dias. Buenos tardes. Buenos tardes. Hola, hola, Coca Cola. Gloria a Dios. Cali Spera. That's morning. Mira. Cali. Mira. Mira. Cali Mira. That's Greek. It's all Greek to me. It's all Greek to me. Um, ¿Y tu familia está bien? There we go. <laughs> First semester Spanish. Muy bien. Muy bien. Muy bien. Gloria a Dios. Iglesia de Dios. De la puerta. De la puerta. Yeah. Is that yeah, gate? That's good. Yeah. <laughs> puerta. All right, man. We are like bilingual. Well, trilingual, actually. And if I bust into tongues. Oh man, we're ready. <laughs> Welcome. We're glad you're here. We are. Uh, we're together. We've all been all over today. I've seen these guys individually, like one at a time. Yeah. Briefly, TJ and I just got to hang out together for a little while, which is awesome. I like this guy. He's pretty awesome. It is pretty good guy. Much and much. I like this guy. It. And uh, the uh, I rode in with Chris today, so we got to hang out a you're little just bit. Just getting it all in. Ryan, I uh, he walked in on him tuning his guitar. Yes. Getting ready for tonight. And Darren, I just barely saw. Mm. Like I've just grazed in the left out. I just just grazed past you mm -hmm. in the uh, office. That's yep. it. So now we're together. Yeah. Yeah. Like all in one place at one time. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. And we love to get together and do this. I do. I know you guys do too. We sharpen each other, and we love it when you comment too. We're in the book of Colossians. You're a part of this discussion. And we're in Colossians 3. Oh, my goodness. We're getting, getting pretty close end. to the end of 3, we actually. Are. We're at the point now where Paul is, like, really getting practical. Yeah. So, you know, in the beginning of Colossians, he's laying out identity. He's laying out who they are. He's laying out uh, the sufficiency of Christ. And now, like Paul often does, he turns in the second half of his letters and uh, he begins to say, okay, now, in light of all of that, right? you got to start there. That's what I love about Paul's writing. In light of who we are, now, this is what we, as a family, look like. And Paul is going to begin to just, uh, talk about family relationships now. This is like, <laughs> Ryan said, maybe we shouldn't even talk about 18 because there's no, I'm, I'm just I'm guessing because there's no women in here to actually talk about this. And no, we were going to skip it. We yeah. were going to skip it at skip, first. Skip 18. So I said we should probably do it. Not oh, I thought you said, it. who said to skip it? Well, you had 19 through 21. Oh, your, I didn't mean that. In your message. And oh my gosh. Skip 18. So oh, were, that's why you, you said skipping. that. I thought you were saying we should skip 18. Oh my 18. gosh, that's hilarious. Like, no, that's so I funny. accidentally did that then because I don't want to skip 18. I actually don't. Yeah, no. Um, okay. But I do want to preface it by saying I've been in plenty of settings where pastors have preached sermons to wives mm. and mothers. And, you know, like I always feel on Mother's Day like, okay, so I'm, I can stand up here and share scripture with you, but... I in no way can yeah. say that I've walked in your shoes or been through what you've been through. Mm, yeah. So even as we talk about this, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I mean, of course, I'll hold my comments until I haven't, I've already started commenting, but I'll hold my comments until everyone else has had an opportunity to share. And I will say um, my views on this are so much different than how I was raised with these passages. So much different through years um, and through a tried and tested marriage now of doing life away that I'll talk about when we get to me. So. But I'll read it now. And Holy Spirit, thank you for opening our eyes that we, we understand what you are wanting to speak to us because the word is mm -hmm. timeless uh, and we want our... <laughs> We want our hermeneutic, <laughs> our biblical <laughs> interpretation uh, and application. We want it to come from you, Holy Spirit. Yeah. And we want it to be consistent with the character and nature of God, consistent with the overarching message of what you would speak to all of us, uh, filled with good news. And uh, we thank you that you do speak to the practical areas of our lives. That's awesome, God. We thank you for that. And... Um, we just give you praise. In Jesus' yeah. name. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. 
We are at verse 18. Wives, be subject to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not become bitter against them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this is pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, do not antagonize your children so that they will not become discouraged. You guys feel free. You don't have... Don't feel like you have to comment on every part of it. Maybe the Lord only spoke something out of one particular part to you, which is totally cool. You know that's the case every time. Mm. Sometimes we each grab a different word or a different verse. So, yeah. well, I tell you what. <laughs> yeah. Last week we started on this side, and we went around we like that. Crossed. So we crisscrossed a little bit. That so uh, since Ryan wanted to skip part of this, no, that wasn't what <laughs> happened. That wasn't what happened. Uh, we're going to go Ryan, Chris, Darren, TJ, me. I always let you be last because I know you're running cameras. I appreciate that. Yeah, I know you're running cameras. And, right. Oh, wait, let me change that. Ryan, Chris, Darren, TJ, you. Oh, there it is. Me. There I'll it is. go last. And if there's anything left to say, I'll say it. And I'll probably say stuff no matter if there's stuff left to say or not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. You'll find the meat on the bone. Okay. Last thing. That's what I want to do. So I found an old friend this past week when I was cleaning out my house because I'm moving in a couple weeks, but this is my like six and a half year old Bible that is a dear friend of mine. I put it in my back pocket and walk around with it. Oh, dude. I found it. It's all like that make you happy. dirty and marked up. Yeah. Yeah, it did make me happy. Like, honestly, it feels like I got an old friend back. It's so fun. That's, That's so cool. awesome. So, I anyway, love it. Yeah, it's NIV. So I was looking at the Passion, and I really like the Passion Translation. But one thing really stood out to me when I was reading this. Am I there? I'm there, probably. Yeah, you're across. I'm over there. Hi. <laughs> Pinky. So, Pinky. It, it's the part where it says husbands, in, in the NIV 19 says, husbands love your wives and do not be harsh with them. And that just like was blare, blaring at me. And like I thought of, immediately I thought of 1 Corinthians 13 where it talks about love, right? <clears throat> so this is, what, this is what Paul is telling us to do with our wives. It is like an impossible task, just to say, just saying, okay? <laughs> Without God, this yeah, is an impossible go. task, okay? So it's a, love our wives. So love is patient. Love is kind. It's not envy. It doesn't boast. It's not proud. You guys know this. It doesn't dishonor others. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects. It always trusts. It always hopes. It always perseveres. It's this like, oh my, like all it's all he's saying is love your wives, but that is it is so packed. Like he yep. is calling us to such a high standard. It's almost like if you are seeking to be married, like get ready because I am gonna bring you like as close to my heart as you, in a way, like figuratively speaking, as close to my heart as you can get because. This is not just like, uh, like courting somebody. This is like, like a avenue to get my heart to like really understand love like deeply, and he's he's calling us, you know, to love them, to love them like he loves us, yeah. and it's such a deep love, it's such an other love that, like, there's nothing in our human existence like outside of God that even that that can get us there. We mm-hmm. we just can't get there. We can't get to this love. Yeah. It's only God's love, like flowing through us, that enables us to love our wives so deeply, and, and to love everybody else deeply too. Yeah. Um, but it's, you know, it's interesting. It says to love, but then I, I thought about, well, what does love do? You know, like mm-hmm. when you show that, when you live that, when you flesh that out, and you ask God to give you strength to be able to love like that, mm-hmm. like what does it do? And it just, it like, we were all made for love. Like, it is the yearning of our hearts. Yeah. Like, I was made for, I and was yet, made for love. Yes, we were made for love. Yeah. Like, it is like a target on our hearts that says, come on, like, get me with it. Get me with it. You know, yeah. it's like, so when we love, like, renewal happens. Like, when we love our wives or when we love the people around us, love, it awakens hearts. 
love satisfies like there's this yearning inside of you know my wife and our wives it's like love me because it satisfies like when we love it satisfies love revives love makes hearts come alive and it's like god this is god's recipe for like an amazing marriage it is yeah. love and 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 it 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 the task for us is like so much of like following Jesus leadership and so much of Jesus leadership was to like humble himself and just pour himself out, you know, like without it, with no regard, like of how it was going to be reciprocated. Now, of course, God like wants us to love him back, but he it's almost like Paul said, like, even if I'm just being poured out as a drink offering, I don't care. I'm going to do it. And like, Jesus, same way. Like, I'm yeah, gonna, I'm gonna yeah. pour my love out. I don't. It doesn't really matter how you respond. I want you to respond in love, but if you don't, I'm just gonna keep pouring it on. Yeah. yeah. And like, I think you know, in order to love our wives well, like we need to understand His love that well that He keeps yeah, pouring yeah. it on even when we don't, even when we say no. Like He's just gonna keep pouring it on. Come on. And there you go. it I reminded me this. of this. Is good. This. Coach Mac, have you guys heard of Coach Mac from Promise Keepers? McCartney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bill uh-huh. McCartney, I think, yep. is his name, but they call him Coach Mac for sure. Paul McCartney. Yeah, not Paul McCartney. <laughs> no, Bill McCartney. Bill McCartney, yeah, Bill yep. McCartney. I remember. But just man who loves God, he was Colorado University's coach, and they won the national championship in the 90s, and then Promise Keepers got a hold of him, and he was holding all these huge men's events. And, like, he was, he's being sought after both, like, in the football realm and also like in the ministry realm like all the time and he was just like he said he just got so bombarded with stuff that he was leaving home a lot and he said that one day he came home and he saw his wife's face and he just realized and and she was mad she was disheartened she was like just broken hearted because he was gone all the time and and he realized like there's nothing more important than like seeing my wife's face Mm -hmm. like glowing like ministry can wait these cut these promotions can wait like what matters is my wife like beaming and so he made he made this decision like i'm not gonna do it i'm not i'm not gonna fly around the country and do all these things like i need to work on her so i think he pulled back for like a year and just like he said that like for weeks or months she just sat in her room and didn't want to talk to him because she was just so bitter and upset but like he just poured the love on and i think it's it's a um um like the story's different now it's like way better their marriage is way better yeah um but like i like 10 years ago i heard that and i'm just and it's like one of these like you know when you get a nugget you're like oh i want to hold on to that yeah like 10 years ago i i heard that and i'm just like Dude, I want to look at my wife's face and like see her radiant. Yeah. And if there's yeah, something yeah. that's keeping her from being radiant, like I know I, we can't fix everything for our wives and stuff, but if there's something I can do to support, like I want to be there for her. Yeah, amen. Yeah. yeah. And so, amen. Yeah, just one little thing. I remember Tracy, we had Anna, our 12 year old. Uh, we had Anna. And Tracy's working full time, and she is a work horse. Yeah, she is. Like, dude, that girl can get it done. <laughs> we were working at Wells Fargo th- together, and she was making so much money because she was just like hitting all these goals, and like we paid off all the all our college tuition. And she has a baby, and she's like Ryan, or we have a baby, and she's like Ryan, I, I want to work part time. Like, okay. I don't want to give myself to the workplace for forty hours a week. I want I want to give myself to my kids. And it was like man, she's just, she's letting me make this decision with her. Mm. And I'm like, do I want her face to be radiant? Or do I want her to go make money so that, you know, we can have all the, these Come things? Come on, Ryan. Yeah. And I was just like, I'm like, Tracy, I don't care. Like, I don't, I, I think I said something like, you can work part-time or you can not work at all. I, actually, that's what God told her. God said, Tracy, you don't have to work part. You can work part time, or you don't even have to work at all. All if you want, to just mm-hmm. stay home with Anna. Great. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of like, that's wisdom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You do, you do whatever you want. But um, awesome. so she ended up working part time, and still is to this day. And there's so many. It's amazing. There's so many times she comes to me and says, "Thank you." Like this was ten years ago, and she's just like, "Thank you for making that decision for us." Like, yeah. 
I don't know where I'd be if I couldn't pour all this love like into our kids. And so I think to, to love our wives and see their faces radiant is, is so important. Mm-hmm. Like we're going to get called to do like great things for God and great things for people. But if our wives aren't like on board with it, that thing can wait, mm-hmm. you know? And uh, so anyway, yeah, right. love you wives. Good words, bro. Chris. <laughs> yeah. Um, I actually see this, or I like to see it, uh, backwards. I like to see it starting in 21, going backwards, where it says, Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Then, children, obey your parents in all things, for mm-hmm. it is well pleasing really to the Lord. And then husbands love your wives and not be bitter against them. And then wives submit yourself unto your own husbands as they fit the Lord. Not saying you need proof of the, the former to do the latter. Yeah. But it, it flows really well. Um, mm-hmm. As fathers, if, if we're not being quarrelsome with our kids, uh, I don't have any. But I could imagine that uh, if you're not provoking them, they're in, in their lack of wisdom, in their youth, they will be more willing to obey. Um, and that's pleasing to the Lord. And when it's pleasing to the Lord, uh, you feel that within your marriage and you feel that within your family. Um, and not that we need it, but then, then you see the value of loving your wife more because you're doing this thing together with your children. Um, and your wives see it. They, uh, again, not that you need to in order to do the other, but it's good to see those things because then, then your wives uh, will see something worthy of submitting because they know it's unto the Lord. Um, as, it, as it is fit to the in, or as it is fit in the Lord, is what this uh, what this translation says, and it's something for each group to see. Uh, but starting with the fathers, uh, uh, because it says husbands, uh, it says husbands in nineteen. But I like starting with fathers because that helps me go right to Father God. Yeah, so if you're not provoking, good. you're not provoking your children to anger. You're not. You're not being selfish towards them. You're not uh, trying to get a reaction for them. I can't imagine, but I know some people have to go through that and have had to go through that. Yeah. Or their fathers are just not comfortable with them growing up, or especially with sons, and maybe they're a little competitive with their sons too much, uh, mm-hmm. provoking them to anger. Um, and then it's cool because the children will see, uh, uh, they will see by example what is a pr- pleasing relationship to the Lord. And that's obeying them. Uh, and then when husbands and wives, mothers and fathers see that together, um, husbands yeah. are then loving and wives are then obeying that is fit into the Lord. Uh, they're seeing this person. Not that they need it. We all should do these things without the other. It should be conditional. But I like, yeah. when I, when it, like I said, when I read it in reverse, it's kind of like a waterfall. Each is falling to the next and yeah. falling to the next. Um, I just think that's beautiful. Um, yeah. Uh, Sub- submitting ourselves uh, to each other, uh, I believe that's part of love too. So I, I get when you know uh, preachers have definitely used it as wives submit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and then they're done. It. You know, yeah. um, but yeah. that doesn't make sense. But when when a wife does submit, the entire family, the entire family flourishes um, with a with a possibility that. Um, it's impossible without that. Without that submission to to um, her husband and family, um, and a wife and a husband loving as well as he's able to. Um, again, it would be impossible if he wasn't loving. Um, if he wasn't loving his wife in that way, like it's the beautiful way that Ryan was was uh, touching upon, then the family doesn't flourish, and then the kids don't obey, and then you're quarreling in return with all your kids and it's, and it's just mm. a mess. So I, I like reading it backwards uh, because of the waterfall aspect, as I call it. Waterfall. Uh, you, mm. not, again, not that, to be clear, not that one. You need to see it in order to do it, but it's just cool yeah. that you, that it, that it kind of is like, like, like a dominoes or waterfall or whatnot. Mm-hmm. It's just each follows yeah. the other and you can start with God and, and end with the, with the encircling, the omega part, <laughs> mm. I like to call uh, with the with the wives, um, submitting to their whole family in, in the way that is pleasing to the Lord and in the way that is fit in the Lord, not just submission for submission's sake. I, because I'm not a woman, I want to be clear. Or because I'm a man, I want to be clear. Um, 
that I see that word in, in Christ-like context, not in some, you know, 1950s, you will submit because I tell you to. You know? <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I really don't have much else of that, just that simple little concept. So. Scott, oh, thank you, Chris. Interesting. You always have a different approach, and I love that. Yeah, that's good. A different way of reading or seeing something. Darren. All right. Well, I had a couple translations that really hit me, but I'm going to focus on one of those. Uh, partly because I figured somebody would have the Passion translation already, so I'm like, ah, <laughs> but that's all right. So I chose to read out of the Amplified. Ooh. I really, really yeah. like the way that it's written. Uh, and it just it just so it just says it so beautifully um, <clears throat> starting in verse 18 wives be subject to your husbands and then it says out of respect for their position as protector and their accountability to God that really spoke to me mm -hmm. because it's not just it's not just making this blanket statement okay wives you're married Submit to your husbands. Mm -hmm. But it's because of his position that God has placed him in as their protector. Mm -hmm. That is so huge. And protector and and as their uh, and their accountability to God. So as a husband, we're accountable to God for our for our spouse. Mm -hmm. um, but getting back to this tar part we're talking about as protector. I mean, if you think about it as uh, you know, in a in a family dynamic, you have the the father and the mother, you know, but the father is the protector of his kids. Or especially like, especially if he has daughters, for example, he's the protector of their heart. So once, once that daughter gets married to her, her then husband, that role changes where the protector of, the, of their heart goes to the, the husband. Mm -hmm. That's his role that the father has advocated to, to the, her, her husband, you know, at that moment. Anyways, uh, and it says, it is proper and fitting in, in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives with affectionate, sympathetic, selfless love mm. that always seeks the best for them. Mm. Oh, I tell you. And do not be embittered or resentful towards them because of their responsibilities of marriage. Mm. But I really like that where he talks about uh, with affectionate, sympathetic, selfless love that always yeah. seeks the best for them. I think, you know, when I read that, I think about Teresa, and I think about the dreams and the desires of her heart and those things, and uh, I just thank God that he put me in a position to be able to, to love her in such a way that I can, that I, you know, I can come on board and come in agreement with the, th the thoughts and desires that she wants to do, and, and the Lord uses that to help her to grow and to bud and flourish and, mm -hmm. and be all that she can be. Um, Amen. And then, uh, yeah, and then and it also said, to, you know, he said, do not be embittered or resentful because of the responsibilities of marriage. Um, in this day and age, the responsibilities of marriage, it's, it's a little bit more fluid than it, than it ever used to be. It used to be, you know, okay, the wife did this, the husband did this, you know. When I was taking uh, marriage uh, counseling uh, before we got married, one of the things that the pastor that did our marriage counseling did, he said, you know, look at the things that your mom and your, your parents each did in their marriage and try to, you know, come up with a, a compromise and say, okay, what, are, what, are, what do you see your roles or what, is, what roles do you think are... Or something that you would do and then you would do, you know, and be able to coexist. Not saying that it always has to be this person, it always has to be this person, but, you know, finding out where your strengths are. Mm -hmm. And so, I don't know, that just kind of makes me think oh, of that. Good, and then children obey your parents as God's representatives in all things. For this attitude of respect and obedience is well-pleasing to the Lord and will bring, bring you God's uh, promised blessings. Kind of hearkening back to uh, uh, the, 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 the Ten Commandments where it says, you know, you know children, honor your father and mother, uh, for this is the, the first commandment with a promise, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. because you, it promises long life. It promises those things. Mm -hmm. um, and I tell you what, going back to my childhood, 
you know, because I obeyed and because I listened and because I respected my my parents, I had a great relationship, and they're always right there to pour into me all the time. And so, uh, I don't think they poured into me just because I respected them, but it made for a more fruitful relationship yeah, yeah, because sure. I honored them for what God, the position God put in in my life. Yeah. Um, and the funny thing about that too is, is that even if we have parents that are non-believers, mm-hmm. they still have things to bring to the table oh, yeah. in our lives. Yeah. They still have fruit that they can they can bring in our lives and and yeah. and and create in us too. Yeah. So uh, yeah. it, it doesn't always have to be you know, you know fruit is not only conditional in a Christian home. It can be in a non-Christian home too. Yeah. That's um, good. Yeah, thank you, Darren. That's good. And then uh, the last thing I have is verse 21. It just says, Fathers, do not provoke or irritate or exasperate your children with demands that are trivial or unreasonable or humiliating or or abusive. There you go. Not by favoritism or indifference. Treat them tenderly with love and kindness so they will not lose heart and become discouraged or unmotivated. With their spirits broken, I, I tell you what I think. I think out of one of one passage, this whole thing that is probably the hardest for men is probably this one. I would say it's probably this one, just because sometimes when you have, sometimes you have those kids in your home that are just a little bit of, you know, they, they just they, you know, they, they they test your Christianity a little bit, you know, <laughs> uh, and so you you have to give that extra measure of grace. Or sometimes you have that one child is like does really well and you have a better relationship sometimes with that child but yet you also have to dole out your your love your father's love equally among all of your children yeah. Yeah. Um, and so it, it's it's no yeah, that's just kind of what I got of it uh, you know but basically we, we definitely don't want our children to lose heart become discouraged and unmotivated I think the, the, mm-hmm. one, of, one of the many things about one of the important things about being a father too is is looking at the, the strengths that our children have and being able to speak into those things. Yeah, that's good. Not, mm-hmm. not try to mold them into a certain you know thing, yeah. but, but to nudge them mm-hmm. towards certain things, you know, mm-hmm. in gentle lovingness and and uh, yeah. you know words like uh, you know a lot of times you hear fathers they say oh you're not you, you're not good enough or you're not doing this right or yeah. this or that and I think sometimes it's we talk about this a lot in the church too it's changing our language <laughs> just shifting our language a little bit and I think if we as husbands just shift our language as fathers to shift our language and we just we intentionally say things a certain way that just speaks blessings. It just speaks life. It just it, it speaks to it speaks heavenly direction. Yeah. You know, not not our what we want. You know, because oftentimes fathers will live vicariously through their kids, mm-hmm. and and uh, God doesn't want us to do that. He wants right. us to to declare into our kids and speak into our kids and just and and, and speak f- godly futures into them. Yeah. Yeah. And to do otherwise would just be curses over them. Yeah. So, that's man. all I got. Good, man. Yeah, man. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that, bro. Holy Spirit just kind of blew into the meeting. <laughs> we didn't. Uh, Jamie came in just a little bit ago. You may have seen him mm-hmm. as he walked in. So you must have been either listening or all of a sudden you had time to jump in. I had time to jump in. I was trying Woo! to get stuff done in time. Oh, a little bit this older. Guy, this but... guy's got stuff to do, let me tell you. Oh, yeah. For real. For real. So, what do you, you got some stuff to bring, bro. Did you guys all speak? Yeah. No, TJ's left after you. Oh, okay. And Brent. Mm-hmm. Brent. Okay. And the people's. Can oh, TJ yeah, the go suit. and then me? <laughs> <laughs> I can't. All right. Okay. We'll do it. Okay, let me switch over Hit to camera me. director. <laughs> And take Jamie's name off and put my name on. Roll camera two. You go. Wow. Roll camera two. Okay. So, um, well, this is, there's a lot to this passage. And, um, I actually, there are, 
I guess in my perspective, I'm not going to say this, but there are multiple versions of this passage, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so when I saw this passage initially, um, I thought of Ephesians 5. And Ephesians oh, yeah. 5 is basically the same thing as Paul talking to the Ephesians instead of the Colossians, but he's talking about yeah. um, marriage. And this was read at our wedding, actually. And I remember in premarital counseling, um, <laughs> as we read this, the um, the pastor that was doing our, our service, he, he was like, now I will tell you, before we even read this, a lot of, uh, just like what you said, Chris, a lot of people will get stuck on the very first part of this. Mm-hmm. And a lot of men. And they will not read the rest of it. Yeah. And I'll tell you right now that men really do have it hard here. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Well, thanks, bro. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. But I, I say all of that. I, I want to just point out what the husbands are called to do um, and how submission to a husband that does that is natural. Mm-hmm. It isn't yeah. something it isn't something that I am like I mean a slave to this man. It's it, like it is like we think of it because we are the bride of Christ, right? So we think it like is it all about our obedience and submission? It's not. It's about falling in love with him. Yeah. And then the obedience and submission comes. And so so and I just, I just want to read Ephesians 5, 25 real quick. Because um, it I think it lays out what Colossians says in kind of an amplified version. It, so it says this, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church yeah. and gave up himself for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word. So that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. Um, And it it goes on a little bit more, um, but. It's just like it's such a powerful, powerful uh, call. I I wouldn't even say like it is a command, but I would I would say it's a calling out of your true identity. I love how we've talked about how Brent does this, but we do that here in this family. Is we we bring out the truth, we bring out the identity of whoever we're talking to, and we help them to and empower them in that identity. And, and I think that's exactly what Paul is doing to the men who are also doing that with their wives. Mm-hmm. And I think that is so beautiful um, in both of these passages. Um, so going back to Colossians, it says, uh, husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, it, I think it's just, it's all about that laying down of self. It's all about, yeah. like, when we look, because the, the ultimate example of Christ's love to his church is the husband to the wife. And, mm-hmm. and how we walk that out, that's where marriage came from, is this view of this relationship between Christ and the church. And, and we ourselves, I mean, we, we proclaim that we walk right alongside Christ, right? We, we co-labor with him. Yeah, yeah. We do these things with him. And I think it's just this beautiful picture that we get to walk out on an everyday basis. We ask for all of these like tangible views of the kingdom. And there, there really isn't a more tangible view of the kingdom other than a marriage a healthy yes. marriage yeah. being walked out in a good way yeah. um so I, I just yeah i just love that yeah, um good. and then going on children children obey your parents and everything for this pleases the lord follow do or fathers do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged mm-hmm. um i i had a moment this morning 
where and it's so funny because I Colossians wasn't even on my mind, but um, Mackie is Mackie is our five year old, and she she is a hard like she does not wake up well. Let's just say that. <laughs> um, so it's always like I've had this ongoing discussion with Carissa today about like how to handle. Um, this certain situation that Mackie goes through every morning and I had this moment um, because we had a little bit of a rough morning and I had this moment where I was like okay ah, I maybe was a little harsh there I don't I don't know because I could see her like you can see it on their face right it's like oh dang it that's not what I wanted I did not want to communicate that to her yeah and you could see, ah, oh, dang it. You could see, like, the discouragement. Yeah. And I was like, oh, no, baby, no. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and that's exactly what he's talking about. And, yeah. and I'm not saying that I do that all the time. <laughs> yeah. But we all have those, oh, man. those moments, right? Where, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, oh, dang it. No, don't lose that. Yeah. Don't lose their spirit. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, I heard a quote the other day. Uh, Discipline your children. Like, what was it? Oh, man. It was it was so good. Um, you, you can never break a child's will, but you can break their spirit. Mm. And I was like, oh, that's good. Mm. Like, and I, I don't even know if the guy was a Christian, but he... He, like and just thinking about that in how we parent and how we yeah. we love and we encourage our children is yeah. is like loving them to a point where where they never feel that discouragement or that that break of spirit I think of of breaking a horse <laughs> you know yeah. like we don't want to we don't want to ever break that that spirit within them mm-hmm. we want them to run wild right we want them to and that honestly that was a piece of us naming naming Mackie her name is Mackenzie Wilder mm-hmm. because we never want to want her to think that she can't be wild mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool wow dude that's so good. so yeah just never mm-hmm. breaking her spirit Man, thank you not only for sharing that, but also for being vulnerable, like, yeah. and modeling, like, yeah. hey, we can all give this great exposition of how it should be. Yeah. Here's where we really are. Here's yeah. what we really face. Yeah. And here's what I see as a victory in this too yeah. that God showed me. Yeah. yeah. And I want to see her face lit up. And yeah. That's really good, TJ. Jamie, Holy Spirit. Yeah. So, no, that's that's really good. Um, yeah, it, when I was um, when I when I read it, I I immediately thought of Ephesians five as well. Um, so it's great you brought that up, and um, it kind of goes in, and it does flesh it out in some ways a bit more. Um, and what point? What's kind of points out to me is in in, in Ephesians five in verse twenty one. It says, uh, you know, submit to yourselves in reverence to Christ. And so I think there's a context there, too, um, that like, okay, what does this look like? How does this play out with um, in kind of the leading of Holy Spirit, what that looks like? Um, And all of these things like, you know, um, you know, wives submit to your husbands as fitting in the Lord and husbands love your wives and do not be harsh with them. And, um, to, you know, we, we can go over like all the different meanings and things, but, you know, we can go respect and supportive and things like that. Um, but one thing that I always uh, try to put in my mind, too, is that uh, submission is kind of coming under the mission. Mm-hmm. So this is in context of like you having a, a, a mission a kind of goal of your marriage um, and so like you're you're coming yes. under something uh, that is actually together but you're coming under something in in the mission um, and, and I think it just reminds me of like hey like uh, we're a team 
So how are we going after this? Yeah. You know, yeah. um, we're never doing something against each other. We're going, how do we solve this together? Mm -hmm. uh, how do we do this and go after this together yeah. um, to, to persevere through a struggle or to yeah. come to an understanding or, or however it may be. And, um, and I think TJ's, uh, whoever said that was right, is like, oh, there's some really hard stuff. Is like, hey, yeah, love your wives like, uh, like Jesus, you know? <laughs> like, like, yeah, like, like super chill. Yeah, yeah. And I think there's a context, too, is like when, when he says wives, he's speaking to the wives. When he says husbands, he's speaking to the husbands. So what people like to do is switch it up where you're a husband, you go, ooh, the wife part, let's read that and mm -hmm. let's mm -hmm. let's speak that out and say that, no, that was that was for the wives, like yeah. to yeah. to understand and and, and and receive and and be led by Holy Spirit and what that looks like. Um, That's good. And uh, yeah, it just <clears throat> the children part is I mean, geez, as a parent, it just really really speaks to you too um and um it, it kind of reminded me just just hearing hearing about it it just reminded me of like those instances and being discouraging as well and like um just learning how to you know treat them as you know as full human beings filled with Holy Spirit, like, like that you, you kind of, if you make a mess, you clean it up, you know? And so that's what I try to do with my kids. And because sometimes I would just be like, oh, wow, that really, like, you can tell, you know, he walked off to his room and he was discouraged, you know, uh, because of the incident. And maybe he felt bad about this and that and, um, and, and come kind of, you know, giving time to deal with the emotions of it and whatnot, but follow, like, I always try to follow up after to, like, clean that up and be like, hey, you know, just so you know, like, this is where I'm coming from. And, and really, really pulling them up into that understanding. I think the, the more communication there is, I think the more natural it is to, um, obey and have that, like Darren said, that really fruitful relationship um, that pleases the Lord. It kind of almost opens the door for them to do it easier um, and smoother um, in what I found. Because, yeah, those those moments suck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> those moments are like, like, yeah. uh, like, you know, you want to do everything right. You want to be you know, perfect in raising your kids, but you go, okay, how do I, how do I dive into this where we can actually, you know, mend that situation, um, in a way that in, in understanding like, Hey, like, forgive me for that, you know? Mm -hmm. And the, the last thing I'll say is that, uh, this is all in a context of love as well. Yeah. Like if you read up, up, like up more, it's like, you know, uh, you know, just do, doing all these things, like, covered in love. I mean, you go to, you go to where it says it in both places. Like, there's this, this context of love, and um, I think that's super important where um, it's a counterfeit if it's out of place. Mm. If it's not within a culture of love, then it looks bad. It looks out of, it's out of touch. It doesn't function how, how God has it. So if there's not a, a culture of that there, then it's that I'm lording over my wife and I'm just saying, do what I say and things like that. But if, if you're always having it in a culture of love, um, you know, like, like TJ said, it comes more naturally. It's like more of an organic thing that like um, it's within this culture that these kinds of things thrive where there's, uh, there's, there's things mutually happening. Um, that's a beautiful thing. So, um, good, yeah. Jamie. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Thank you. What do we got from uh, anyone online? Mm -hmm. Hop over and look. Yeah, let's see what we got. 
Tiana says, I'm here. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I wish she was here. She can really share something. She says, good. no better husband in the world than Brent. Uh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Uh, oh, she's sweet. She's so sweet. Anybody like, else? Like lemonade on a hot day. <laughs> Checking that YouTube, baby. Checking, Checking the YouTube. Not seeing anything on YouTube. All right. So, yeah. Excuse me. That'd be it. Pardon right. me. Sounds good, brother. Um, so I'm going to bring maybe a different twist to this. Uh, Get out there. <laughs> first, Get out there. I'm kidding. No. First of all, let me say that family is like super important. To God yeah there was family before we got here mm -hmm. and inside of the Trinity there was family before we got here like the reason there's family in the earth is because on earth as it is in heaven yeah. God wanted there to be an expression of the earth of what heaven looks like and um, so if we start with the Trinity uh, and there are different views on this let me go let me let me make that very very clear mm -hmm. There are different views on how to approach this. And I come from a background of being raised in a home where the dad is the, he's the final word. Uh, not, you know, my dad lo was loving, but there was absolutely no question who was in charge. Like dad was in charge and mom was second in command. And, um, you know, we were not in command <laughs> which, <laughs> at all, to be clear, which is, you know, I mean, we were kids. We yeah. knew that that was the order of things. That's, that's how her mom says, when your dad gets home, you know, this oh, is, yeah. that was her, that was her call. Because we pretty much could run over mom, mm -hmm. but we could not run over dad. I mean, that's the home I grew up in. Um, I grew up in what would be, be called, most people might now call a complementarian view of marriage even so you know you've got the you've got a hierarchy um, and so that idea of a hierarchy some people actually apply to the Trinity there's the father oh, yeah. there's the son there's yeah. the Holy Spirit there's the husband there's a the wife there's a there's a whole hierarchical uh, structure but it starts in the Trinity and the reason we have one in the earth is because we have one in heaven so on earth as it is in heaven same argument I'm about to make, only I'm going to argue from a different place. Argue is a bad word. Um, well, it's not a bad word. It's, you know, we're, we're processing through sharpening every, all of us get to sharpen each other, right? Yeah. I don't see, I don't see hierarchy inside of the Trinity. I see such a oneness and an other-centeredness and a mutual submission that exists inside of the Trinity mm -hmm. that, that yeah. there's not a fight going on. Yeah. There's no evidence that there is uh, other than other than when Jesus comes to the earth as a man. Mm -hmm. And as a man submits himself to the Father, then he's returned to his glory. Yeah. Which is what he says in John 17. So when Jesus returns to his glory, my view is that he no longer is in this place of I am as a man on the earth subject to the Father. He is co-equal with the Father. We, we use those terms, co-equal, right? Inside of the Trinity, there's co-equality. Well, I didn't have any of that idea at all in my understanding of God. I wouldn't even have thought about it that deeply. All I knew is here's how the home works. It's dad, mom, and we're down here, right? There's a hierarchy. There's a structure. Um, so the, the way that this changed for me, here's where some transformation and transition happened for me. About 20, 28 years ago, 29 years ago, something like that. Long, long time ago. Uh, Tana and I were in a situation where Tana was, was being persecuted for believing that she had a call on her life. Women couldn't have that, right? And uh, in this church that we were in. And so I thought women could be in ministry, but even pastors when I was growing up. But we just had a really weird way of viewing all of that. Um, 
<laughs> if you had a woman pastor, you had to have a male overseer come in and oversee the, the meeting of the members. Mm -hmm. It was really weird, okay? We had to have some way of applying this in our denomination. But I knew women could preach and they could be in ministry, but this church we were in didn't even believe women could hardly be in any kind of ministry, especially a leadership role. So it forced, it didn't force, that's the wrong word. Love compelled me. Love compelled me. My love for my wife, what you guys are talking about, like wanting to see your wife's face shine. Mm -hmm. My wife's face was not shining. Mm -hmm. My wife would go to bed crying at night. My wife would go to bed at night because the literal quote to her was, Brent's called to serve Jesus and you're called to serve Brent. Mm -hmm. That's what she was told. Gosh, we wow. were told. Yeah, exactly. So that, that, <laughs> that to, which to her credit, she responded in that moment and said, well, I was kind of serving Jesus before I met Brent, and we thought we'd serve him together. And they didn't, we didn't like that quote very much, but I love it. I mean, I loved it, and, and, but, I, we, but that didn't change the fact that we would go home at night, and you know, I would go home because she, you know, she wasn't there with me. I would go home at night, and she would be there, and she would be crying. She would be sad. Um, because there's this call in her life. And you know, all she told them was, I want to go to Bible school. That's all she said. I want to go to Bible school. And they said, well, why? Well, because I have this call. Well, you, that's, you can't have that. It's basically what she was told. Well, that launched me into a study that led further than I thought it would. It went into a rabbit hole deeper than I saw coming. All I wanted to see was, what does the Bible teach about women in ministry? Well, I undoubtedly came away with a strong view that women can serve in every capacity of leadership. Uh, that men could serve in, and the Bible has ample evidence, Old and New Testament, and that's not even what we're here to talk about, because it led to the deeper dis discussion and discovery between Tana and I together, because we went on this journey together, we actually wrote a research paper on it, because mm. we were required to by the elders at the church. Mm. We had to write a research paper on what we read that was then submitted to a doctor in the Southern Baptist Church who rebutted our research paper. Exactly. So we had to like really do research, right? And, um, but we did it together. Tan and I went on this journey together. And in this journey, we discovered this book called Paul, Women, and Wives by Craig Keener. Mm. That book changed my life. Not only because it does such a great job. It's very scholarly. It's not like a bedside book. Yeah. I mean, it's the, the, the footnotes in the book are as thick as the book. Yeah. <laughs> and what Dr. Keener is, which he is the one that's behind the IVP Bible background commentary, if you guys have that. The IVP Bible background commentary, New Testament part of it, that's primarily Craig Keener. So his, uh, his, his expertise, his area of study, is what is the background of what is going on and in, in why would Paul have said the things that he said mm -hmm. and understanding that from the culture the way they would have understood it when they read it. So that, and it's so documented that that's what you know, caused me to pay a lot of attention to what he wrote. I read a lot of other stuff that was good, that's the best I've ever seen. Well, what got me was, so his first part's on women in ministry, but his whole second part starts dealing with wives. And all of a sudden, he starts challenging everything I've ever believed when he introduces this idea that in the home, if, if you were to ask Paul for his view, just like women in ministry, if you were to ask Paul for his overall view, he would say, in Christ there's neither male nor female, Jew nor, Jew nor Greek, bond nor free. Mm. Um, you know, he would not argue for there being this place of women being underneath men, that actually it was there's equality is what is what Paul would have argued for. And part of what he did was go into Ephesians, which I'm glad you guys went there because Ephesians I call Colossians the shorthand of Ephesians. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. like and that's one of the reasons I chose Colossians actually for our book study, because we could we could get a lot of the stuff from Ephesians in a more compact form. Yeah. But um, if you want to go broader with Paul's argument for any of a lot of stuff in Colossians, go to Ephesians. Ephesians 5. But I back up one more verse and go back to verse 20. Because verse 20 says to submit to one another. Yeah, that's what I was saying. With the, yeah. yeah. And maybe you hit on that and I missed it, Jane. No, that's okay. But verse 20 it says to submit to one another. And then Paul goes into uh, what would be considered to be a normal, mostly normal in the setting that you live in, the, the Roman people, uh, the, the Colossian people, the Ephesian people, they would have not entered Roman culture and Greek culture. They would have been surprised that he went into this discussion. 
but he expanded it and he added stuff and he took them to another level. So he helped move them further on. In the, in the setting that you live in, here's where how I want you to live. And so that the gospel can go forth and so that people can look at your lives. And at the same time, I'm going to plant some seeds. I'm going to plant some seeds and I'm going to say stuff to husbands that you're not currently used to hearing. I'm going to leave some stuff out to wives that you are used to hearing, like obey. Paul doesn't use that word. Uh, but they were used to hearing that. They would have seen the same outline that he gave, only obey would have been added. And then for husbands, it would have been like you would have had like, I mean, up for children, you could beat your children. I mean, it was like mm -hmm. to that point. They would have been used to seeing that kind of argument. Yeah. He comes and he says, hold on. I want you to follow the social, I want you to fit in in your culture, but I want you to bring a different view. I want you to show them a different way. I want you to show them husbands that love their wives. But he, he doesn't shy away from the word submission because it's a great word. But what Jamie said was so good because it's not the wife coming under the husband's mission, it's us coming under God's mission together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. and, and arguing for equality inside of, of the relationship, one of the ways that Dr. Keener does it, he says all you got to do is drop down to slaves obey your masters. Well, we're going to go there next week. But Paul was definitely not saying in all cultures, at all times, I advocate slavery. Mm -hmm. There's no way Paul's saying that. So one of the things Dr. Keener says is if you're going to understand the book you're reading, you always have to go back to the first part where it says, to the saints in Ephesus, or to the saints of Colossae. If we don't know what's going on when the book was written, we're not going to accurately interpret it, right? Yeah. So i got to be careful. I'm running down a tongue. And I'm babbling pretty much. Nope. No, um, you're not. This is but, true. <laughs> but, but he says, so what Dr. Keener points out is, if you ask Paul for his overall view on it, he would say, slaves, you know, there's neither slave nor free. He would say to Philemon, uh, hey, I want you to, you know, he writes a book of Philemon, he says, I want you to set your slave free, right? My heart is not for slavery. But people in the South, in this country, uh, used that verse, oh, yeah. slaves obey your masters, oh, yeah. to keep propped up a system of slavery. Look, yeah. the Bible says it right there. Right. That's why this idea that we can just take a verse out and say, well, the Bible says it. If we don't accurately interpret the Bible, we will use the Bible to enslave others mm -hmm. and hurt others. And yeah. so Paul's definitely not advocating slavery. He is saying in the culture you live in, slaves, go ahead, obey your masters. If you can be free, I think he says that in 1 Corinthians 7. If you can be free, get, by all means, be free. But in your culture, obey your masters. But he goes further and says, now masters, you need to treat your slaves right. Right? So he, he speaks into it, but he doesn't just totally obliterate everything they've ever known. He says, in your culture, this is what you're accustomed to. I'm going to speak into that because I want the gospel to go into your culture. And when the gospel fully infiltrates your culture, women are going to be elevated. Yeah. Uh, women are going to begin to be treated as equals. There's going to be no more slavery. Yeah. That's not going to exist anymore because the, the gospel is going to take firm root in your culture. And from the inside out, it's going to change the way you view people. And you'll never yeah. want to bring anyone under you and, and force them to submit to you ever again. Because that's not the kingdom. Yeah. In fact, if you want to look at how Jesus led, he said, <laughs> this is, nobody leads like this. <laughs> you do greater things than I did. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to get down here and wash your feet because I'm here to serve. And if you want to be great in my kingdom, you be the greatest servant. So Tan yeah. and I took that and we began to view our marriage as mutual submission. Like how can we, I love to, well, I say that. There's plenty of times I haven't loved to submit to my wife, right? When she has something amazing that God's given her, but I've I got something better I think I want to say. I, I have plenty of that. But my goal is when I hear Holy Spirit speaking to her, I want to submit to that word because that's a word from the Lord. Yeah. So I, I have no problem submitting to Tana. She has no problem submitting to me because we submit to one another in our love for the Lord. And our goal is to outserve the other one. Mm -hmm. Who that's can outserve the other one? How can that's we good. live in our marriage in that way? And then how can we love our children in such a way that we serve them? We call out the best that's in them, not to overlord them, but to come under them and give them the best possible mm. um, opportunities to succeed in everything God's called them to do. Okay. Another great book I would recommend is called Together. This is another one that began to shape my thinking about marriage. It's called Together, Reclaiming Co-Leadership in Marriage. Yeah. And 
what it did is it said, I don't, and I want to talk about complementarian egalitarian, which would be, I would closely, that would be what I would, my closest, if you could give my view a, a name, it would be egalitarian, we're equal. But this book said, forget those titles, because egalitarian is, we're just going to try to both compromise and come to a good decision. That's leaving the Lord out. This, this view was, we both go to the Lord, we ask him separately what he's saying on a situation we're trying to get an answer to. We come together and we see if, if we got a red, yellow, or green light from him. Mm. And then if we are both a green light, we go for it. For both the red light, we don't. For both the yellow light, we stay cautious. But if one's a red and one's a green, then we don't just plow through because I'm the husband and I had the green light. Mm. And you yeah. submit to me because I love you, you know, or whatever, you know, because that can be said, right? Look, I love you, so oh, I can't tell you guys how many times I've had guys, and for real, come to us, and, and they want us to get their wives to submit to them. Like, <laughs> that is what they want us to do in counseling. Like, you just need to get her to submit. She's not submitting. Like, dude, you're so missing the point of what you guys said so well, loving mm-hmm. each other. But in this, in this approach, it is we go to the Lord, and if we don't have an agreement, we keep going to the Lord until we get an agreement with each other. Huh? How could two walk together unless they agree? Yeah. yeah. And so we, we both come under him and we submit to him, but we only do that really in, in relationship by submitting to one another. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm pretty passionate about this, I think, because um, of what I, you know, what I saw it do in our life and our marriage and the turnaround that happened for us. I mean, like, and I don't mean we've never had struggles because we have, but man, at the, we, we do life together. We serve each other. We, we walk through this thing as equals, and we walk through this thing asking the Lord, like, what are you saying to us? How are you calling us to work? We couldn't have made through it last summer what we went through had we not had each other as teammates. Mm. Like, we're in this thing together. We, you know, I want, I want to outserve my wife. I want to serve her. I want to come underneath her. I want her to shine what you said. I want her face to shine. I want her to walk in everything God's called her to walk in. Mm. So I am really like, I'm really all for, uh, in, in the home, I'm all for coming to a place of where a husband and wife can uh, together seek the Lord and, mm. and together side by side. That's, Eve was not taken out of Adam's head so she could stand on him. She wasn't taken out of his feet so he would stand on her. She came out of his side. Mm-hmm. She came out of his side because the only way that we fully reflect uh, what heaven looks like on earth is side by side. Amen. Inside the Trinity is side by side. I think I said Sunday that one of the ways to talk about uh, the right hand of the Father is out of the right side of the Father yeah. is, is Jesus. And they stand together, and Holy Spirit is right in the midst of all of that together. As actually, to throw that out there, the feminine representation of God, there's no competition inside of God for who's the boss. So there's no competition inside my home. Amen. I'm not the boss of my house. I don't even call myself the spiritual leader of my home, which flies in the face of so much of our teaching. And I'm not telling you guys what to think. I'm telling you guys what I believe. Yeah. But it flies in the face of so much of our teaching. I'm not the spiritual leader of my home, even though I prayed that in my wedding vows. Because I didn't know anything else, any other way to look at it. No. Jesus, it, it takes so much pressure off me when I say Jesus is the spiritual leader of our home. Yeah. Yeah. And Tan and I go to him together because we love each other. Mm. We, we, we love Jesus. Mm. And he's got good stuff to speak into our marriage. And if I don't listen to what he's speaking to her, I'm going to miss out. And if she doesn't listen to what she, he's speaking to me, she's going to miss out. So yeah. I went way over time. Yeah. Are we out of time? I mean, whenever we're ready. <laughs> we're close. Uh, and I know I could do a much better job, honestly, of laying that out in a more systematic way. You're more getting my heart on it. But the bottom line is side by side, together, co-leadership. And maybe that's even the word. It's his leadership. Mm. And, and we come under that. So, yeah. yeah. And, and then our children, we get to serve and teach and train and raise them up, not as our little slaves, but as those who are made in the image of God. Yeah. That we get to call the gold out in. You guys did a great job of talking about that. So you're, we have a few great fathers in this. That's right. And some great to-be fathers and some great dog, dog fathers too. 
<laughs> There's the Godfather and the Dog Father. <laughs> so, um, you know, my encouragement to everyone would be, and I do this when we do premarital counseling, I introduce people to this idea, but I say in the end, you know, you guys are going to have to. It's, you may walk away from here and say, I totally don't agree with this pastor. I've never heard anything like that. And so if you, if you hold the complementarian view, just be sure you hold it in the context of love. And you guys have to work that out between you. I'm not going to be with you in your marriage. Hmm. I love what you've said in premarital counseling. I do the same thing. I, it's not traditionally what the roles were. It's you two together hmm. saying who, I would be stupid if I'm like, you know, I, Rick Godwin makes this thing. He's like, if your wife is better at accounting than you are, then why are you running the, the checkbook? Yeah. Like you're the boss of it. No, if, if that's her gifting, that doesn't mean check out. Like you're a part of it still. But if she's stronger in this area, lean into her, lead, you know, her leadership. Yeah. I love saying that. My wife is a leader and she leads yeah. me. Mm -hmm. She leads me well. I am a leader and I lead her well. We mm -hmm. lead each other in the beauty of Christ. And we serve each other because that's what a leader is in the kingdom. So anyway, awesome. that's that's where I'm at, guys. Anything else said online? I don't want to miss it. Nope. Yeah, everybody nope. staying away from this one, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and we went long today. But yeah. to be fair, this is uh you know, this is a this it's is important. A, it's yeah, very important. Uh, super important. Yeah. And how we think about this, and like you said, our language can shift. And our, mm. I know for me, 28, 29 years ago, it was, it was a huge shift. And it changed our marriage. It changed my life because I was under this heavy. Here I have this wife that's an amazing leader, so gifted and, and competent. And I'm just like, I don't know how to lead her because she's like already awesome. She's on fire. And then like, yeah. I found out, oh, we can lead together. Yeah. Oh it's wow, scary. this is awesome. I can learn from her. Mm. I can grow. She can learn from me. There's other areas mm. that we can pour into each other. So mm. she's changed my life, man. She oh. had a relationship with the Holy Spirit like no one I've ever known. And you guys heard some of her little one little story from her yesterday at staff meeting. Mm -hmm. I mean, she has this amazing so life of encounter with God. Mm -hmm. And I got to marry into that. So mm -hmm. what am I doing with you know I'm I don't, what am I doing taking any place other than getting to stand alongside of her and, man, champion her and run with her. So. Yeah. Okay, I'll quit, I'll quit. I sound like Keith Johnson says that sometimes. Okay, that's it. I'll say no more. Yeah, he <laughs> I'll say no more. Well, so, good stuff, guys. Yeah. Great discussion. So I know you all love your wives, and I know that you all love your kids, and um, that have kids and that have dogs and that have, uh, you know, you love your families. Let me say it that way. Yeah. yeah. I love that you do. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I wish Angela was here. She could have brought some good stuff too. Oh, yeah. She has had to have, being in seminary, she had to process this at a deep level. Mm -hmm. um, at a college that didn't agree with her egalitarian view. And she had to defend it. So she's got some pretty good stuff on that. She'd be good. She'd be good to have had in here today. Yeah. Um, okay. Anything else? No one else? No more comments? Nope. Okay. Sorry. Well, let me tell you something then. You come on out here tonight at 5 o'clock because we're going to have some pizza. Yes. Mm. 5 o'clock pizza, 6 o'clock final life group, and fire pit for the fire pit. for you guys. Yep. We're going to be doing fire outside. It's so hot in here right now. <laughs> you guys hot? Oh, you got shorts you're, on. You're burning up, dude. You're fired I started up. preaching. It's 85 outside. That's probably why it's hot in here. Yeah. Hot in the hot tub. Oh, I'll have to get the so, AC going here pretty soon. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> it, kick it on. Um, let's see. So we got that. Then we got Quincy on Friday night. Quincy? Uh, 7 o'clock oh, with the Quincy Good Star Praise Band. <laughs> and then we got uh, church on Sunday. 9.15 we're going to be back and other than that we're glad you guys are with us today thank you we bless your home yeah. Lord I pray for marriages right now God I pray for those that mm. are going through um, just a tough place right now and uh, we can do all the teaching we want but God you want to meet us where we are experientially uh, you want to heal marriages mm. you want to heal relationships between husbands and wives you can do it um, Lord, you brought Tan and I through one. I remember one really, really hard time we had in our marriage, God. And 
how you have brought us through that. Come on. And, yes. I, and I just I just thank you for it. If you can do it for me and Tana, you can do it for anybody. Yeah. Man. So I pray for every so. marriage. I pray for fathers and children and mothers and children. Lord, I pray for that relationship. God, I bless what you're doing yes. in the home. Lord, the home is the... That's the, the talk about the, the microcosm of the church. That's it right there. Yeah. Christ in the church and the relationship of husband and wife and, and just this beautiful expression of the Trinity right there inside family. God, so thank you for blessing. Bless our kids, God. Yes, God. They're not we don't believe they're to be seen and not heard. Mm. Lord, you can teach us through them. Yeah. You do teach us mm. through them. And Lord, we learn uh, from them. And we also get to pour into them, Lord. And so we thank you for that. We just bless you and give you praise because you are working in our homes. Yeah, we thank you. for. Let us see what you are doing right now and get on board with that. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, thank you. We ran really, really, really long today, mostly because I think I must have talked for a half hour. So <laughs> God bless you guys. Thank you, thank you. Have an amazing rest of your week. Go out and keep giving them heaven. heaven.